Welcome to the Going Deeper segment where Justin and Megan and I are going to talk about a few things. They don't even know what we're going to talk about. So He's they're not just kidding. sitting here. <laughs> Let's see. Go ahead and chat some questions you want to ask <laughs> these guys, and maybe we can just throw them some stuff. Yeah. Um, well, what I wanted to get started with, guys, and Justin, I'll throw it to you first because I know you're like excited. You got yes. lots, lots to of stuff say. in your brain. Um, yeah, exactly. All of this stuff. <laughs> Matthew 9 36. When Jesus saw the crowds, he was moved and he felt compassion. Um, he knew they needed a shepherd, um, but they didn't have one. And so, as you think about this, what are some things that, that you do to have? Because I'm you're a compassionate guy. Oh, wow. Well. Like, how do you have the compassion of Christ? All the time, yeah. Twenty four seven, every single day just of the week. Can you, out of you. Can you yeah. just tell these folks like yeah. how you do it? Especially comes out when I'm driving. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> and I just, yeah. I love all. All he does is drive road. around and just be like, "Father, forgive them. They don't know what they do." You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. How do you have that kind of compassion? You know, maybe somebody. Um, I, I, I imagined when we thought about the people who are listening to this sermon. Um, you know, you might have people who've been doing this kind of uh, life on mission for a while and they need new ideas. But then we may have also have some people who've just never decided to get started. And so how do you how do you do it? Is it just as simple as what Pastor Ernie was saying, just by, you know, inviting old, old uh, the elderly to go first? Or what is it? How I don't do you do know. It? I, think, I think when you when when you look out at the crowds, wherever you're at, you know, uh, uh, unless you're a hermit in the woods, uh, mm-hmm. there are people around Which you. Which wouldn't be you, by the way, because he's not a camper. Oh, way. I don't camp. <laughs> <laughs> that, no. <laughs> so I don't he, even camp in a trailer. I don't even camp in a camping no. trailer. Why he would camps I wanna... in uh, Holiday Inn Express. <sighs> yeah. Thing. Oh, now that. <laughs> <laughs> Where they make you breakfast and everything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he roughs it. Anyhow, go ahead. Sorry. Thanks. Anyways, uh, man, just uh, like like what Ernie said, just maybe pray for them. Yeah. You know, I think I think if you want to have compassion on people, then then um, you're not gonna just muster that up out of your own out of the own good in your heart or soul. Right. You know. Right. Uh, that's something that that. Uh, that God's got to give you, and yeah. so I think I think you when you see people, I mean, when you're thinking about it, pray. Yeah, I think it's huge. That's good. Pray for them and pray for, for me. It's pray for me that I have that compassion, because yeah. like, it doesn't oh, yeah. come out of the goodness of me. Yeah. you know, it doesn't. No. <laughs> when I'm angry it's and not the on the road, or, of your heart. Yeah, yeah, or when I get cut off, or when I get. Bless yeah. you. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I just I gotta Thanks pray for God. that in me, for something in me to change that yeah. that the compassion does come out. One of the things I was thinking about um, was uh, one of the things that I try to do is you know because we're all the time being hurt in life and we're you know everything things are a challenge and we're having trouble. We see people who are hurting. You know, when I'm sitting with people in my office, whether it's you know the biblical counseling or things like this that we do, I always try to remember that that people. Not that they could just excuse every bad thing that they do, but in some ways, like, to, to, to empathize with people mm-hmm. and know that even though they may be making a bad choice, that they're kind of a pawn of the enemy, yeah. you know, because the, it's the enemy that wants to, you know, kill and destroy every good thing that's in our lives. And so um, that's one of the things that I do, that I try to do when I'm talking with people, is try to remember that um, in, in some ways they may be making bad choices, but... That, that they're in fact just kind of a pawn of the enemy. And that helps me to empathize with people sure. better because I can understand there's a bigger thing at war here around us and then the battle is huge. Yeah, um, it's huge. It's good. What are some things that, you know, like as you're working with people that you work with, what are some things that, how do you get that um, perspective, proper mm. perspective? Or maybe you never do. And like you the old, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like the old <laughs> adage of, you know, hurt people hurt people. It, oh, it's yeah, easy. Exactly. It's easy to say when I'm not the one being hurt, but right. just even acknowledging that okay, there's something, I'm not the enemy usually. You know, there's usually something else that's going on behind or that's, you know, whether they lash out at me because I X, Y, Z, didn't do something right. right. That's not really what they're upset about. There's something else behind, you know, mm-hmm. going on or whatever. Now um, you said you're not the enemy usually. What's that mean? Like, <laughs> except sometimes my, you are. My child <laughs> thinks yes. When I don't let sometimes my I child am, yeah. do something, oh, I probably I am the enemy. Okay, no, gotcha. but I try not to be the enemy. No, but even when sometimes. she is the enemy, we pray for her because yes. we're, Jesus calls us to pray <laughs> for even compassion. our enemies. Yeah. So. Yes. <laughs> I need the compassion. Give me the love and the compassion. 
No, I think that's huge though because I mean, like like people aren't our enemy. Like there's something going on right. behind the scenes. Like things are not as they seem. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I yeah. think that's. I mean, that's like the entire book of Revelation, right? Things are yeah. not as they seem. There's this right. great spiritual thing that's happening behind the scenes. And so, kind of like you were saying, you know, maybe it is that they're just kind of being moved around by the, you know, the enemy and, mm-hmm. and, and recognizing that and realizing that, that like, God loves these mm-hmm. people, right. you know? And, and that's yeah. so important. And, and I know those are some of the hardest dis- the discussions that we have with people um, when we're sitting in rooms where maybe you've been, you know, um, you've been in a relationship where somebody has cheated on you, or you've been in a situation where your kids have, um, I know I have, where your kids just tell you, you know, they don't need you for something or something like this, you know. Um, but when we talk to these people, it's also important that we, we that we do come at it with a lot of empathy because we don't just say, oh. You know, don't worry. It's just the you know they're being a, it's a pawn of the enemy type of a thing because this is very hard stuff. I mean, if you have a spouse that's that's been unfaithful or something, I think it is important for us to have the proper perspective um, on uh, on things and help them have the proper res- perspective, but not forget about the hurt. It still you know? sucks. Yeah, it still st- yeah, that's right. It still stinks, and we're still in it, and we still and we can still say that that's not okay. You know, but uh, we need to remember that I mean, there's a huge battle at hand and we live in a fallen world, unfortunately. Um, and so one day Jesus will make it all right and we'll, we'll just be partying. But yeah, yeah right yeah. now Ooh. we're trying to make his kingdom come into a fallen world. Yeah. And that's what we want to be working on. Um, Literally being heaven here. Yeah, that's our goal, heaven right? on earth, yeah. that's right. So let's just um, uh, lastly talk a little bit about this. I was thinking about um, you know, Pastor Ernie was, was talking about why it's important to honor people in the world they live in without honoring their world. That's a big statement because, you know, we, we all work in different areas. You know, Justin and I, we get to work in the church most of the time. We, live in a, we work in a pretty decent world. Um, <laughs> but maybe you're working in a world that is like completely anti-God or, you know, uh, or just a world that is, uh, you're in worlds and environments that are very challenging to your faith. Um, you know, why would you guys say, I'll throw it over to Megan, why would you guys say it's important that you honor people first that in you, I don't know, do you just overlook their world or what do you do with the mess that somebody mm-hmm. might be in as you're building that relationship? Sure. I mean, I think almost, um, yeah, initially I do. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I think initially until there's some trust, until there's some the rapport built and until that you feel that I am on your side uh-huh. in this, then uh-huh. yeah, I think I almost do. Um, you know, Jesus led with grace and truth, but I think grace comes first uh-huh. for a reason. You know, yeah. like we lavish them with grace. Um, like Jesus looked at them with compassion because they were without the shepherd. Uh-huh. And so I think, yeah, initially I do kind of overlook their world. Not, you don't join it. You don't get in and right, right beside them and whatever. but. I do kind of overlook it, um, realizing who's all the enemy behind the scenes and the products yeah. of their environments. And I mean, yeah, tons of reasons. Well, think about the things that that, that Jesus overlooked in our lives. Right. You know, like, that's what I was just, that's like, the first thing is like, how could I not? How could I be just judgmental? Yeah. When I mean, God has rescued us even while we were yet sinners. Mm-hmm. You know? And yeah. he still is. Like, he still mm-hmm. overlooks so much right. in me that I have yet to, mm-hmm. you know, he's saving all of that out of me still. And mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think I do look overlook the world initially, and then once there's a relationship, once that they know that, again, I'm on their side, then, then we talk. I, I heard a um, psychologist talk, one of the Christian psychologists talk once about, um, I, I, for, I forget the, yeah, I'm throwing it to you, I'm starting to lean this way. Um, I forget the exact uh, clinical term, but it was a transitive property of, of uh of bad or sin. It was really interesting what he did with a crowd, and maybe you've heard Ernie preach on this too, but he took an apple and he said, who would take a bite of this apple? You know, everybody of course said yes. And then he smashed dog poop on it and he said, now who would take a bite wow. of this apple? Would you? No. no. Okay, right? Because, it, but nobody would say... It's just a little bit of poop. Yeah, <laughs> this is just a little bit of dog poop, but <laughs> nobody would say that the poop was made good by the apple. Hmm. But everybody would say the apple was made bad by the poop that was spread on it. And 
And and what that means is it, I just can't get away from poop. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Sorry. my house. It's like all of our conversations. But his point was, in in Jesus's day, when Jesus or when we hang around with sinners or with people in in their environments, um, it, it always our goodness or goodness of God in us doesn't ever get attributed to other people. It always gets attributed to, that we could become bad or that we are bad mm -hmm. because we hang around with people. Um, who in, in their worlds without honoring their worlds. Mm -hmm. And so, what do you think about poop? <laughs> <laughs> Unreal. You said Unreal. that's what you wanted to talk no. about. <laughs> no, but isn't that interesting? Yeah, I mean, I, because I, mean, I think there's like, there's guilt that's associated with, well, if I hang around with somebody in their environment and, and honor them, um, you know, I might become bad. Yeah, yeah. I think I think in order to honor someone in the world that you that they live in, you have to recognize their world, but then show them a better world. Oh yeah, that's good. Yeah. You know, you right. know, you have to come into that environment and 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 show something that show that it can be different. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because to go into the environment and adapt to that environment mm -hmm. doesn't honor them. Mm -hmm. You know, it just it just it just tells them that that what they're doing is is exactly what you want them to do. There's nothing that you want, you know, changed. Mm. And and That's so good. and so and recognizing their mm. world, coming into their world, and then showing them a better way is is how you honor them. Mm -hmm. You know, in the world that they live in. And then there was Jesus who just turns water into wine and makes the party even better. So mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Teeth or dog poop in. <laughs> well, all right, guys. Oh, stop. Justin, come on. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's all the time that we have. I've uh, got uh, this feeling that we're ending <laughs> somehow. And, bad. and so <laughs> I just want to thank you. If you're new here, make sure you get connected, tcaz.us forward slash connect. Um, that's all you got to do. Just go to tcaz.us forward slash connect. You can get all the information you ever need. Thank you for partnering with us. If you support um, the vision and mission of the church, we just want to thank you. Um, if you if you haven't yet, you can just go to tcaz.us forward slash give and do that. We will see you next time. Have a good week.